Chapter 1. Your passion and dreams are powerful pointers to your destiny. What are the things you're passionate about? Do you have your dreams documented? Or have the vicissitudes of life made you forget all about them? Most people know what their destinies are right from childhood. They imagine the kind of lives they want to live and design their futures through imaginative thinking. But then they grow up and forget all about those dreams. They instead begin to follow the norm, doing what everyone else is doing. It would help if you learned to protect your dreams and passions from negative people and the harshness of this world. If you don't, your dreams will only be a line of thought you've always had but will never become your reality. Write down your life goals and never stop reminding yourself about them. Your pain and passions are a compass to your destiny. If you follow them carefully, you won't miss the path. For Santiago, the shepherd boy, his passion has always been to travel the world. And he found that he could do this if he became a shepherd. By following his passion for exploring the world, he met people and circumstances that propelled him to his destiny. He would have missed out on destiny if he had resigned to his father's peasant life in a small village. But the boy was brave enough to take the bull by the horns and search out his destiny. Santiago's life story is a picture of what you should expect when you set out to discover yourself and live life to the fullest. The subsequent chapters will reveal more details on what happens to anyone who wants to fulfill their life call. It's the possibility of having a dream come true that makes life interesting. Paulo Colho Chapter 2. You won't see the complete picture at the beginning. You've probably heard success stories and have seen how every success begins with a vision, a dream in the heart of the successful person. But what many people fail to realize is that no single successful person ever had their lives entirely figured out in the beginning. Even if a fortune teller were to spell out your destiny, they could only tell you parts of what your future will look like because they can't tell the whole picture either. If you are at the point where you don't know what to do with your life, here's fair advice. Start by following your passion. Identify the things you love doing or would like to explore. Then take steps towards them. Let's say you're fascinated by the business world and enjoy the prospect of investing in businesses and being part of their growth. You could begin by starting a business of your own to learn firsthand how businesses are run. When you do, don't forget your ultimate goal of being an investor, else you will be distracted by minor successes. Apply this principle to any passion you have. Never stop improving yourself, dreaming big, setting lofty goals, and working hard to turn them into reality. As you progress, you will gain more clarity and meet people who will help you fulfill your destiny. Circumstances will start working in your favor because you choose to take action. But if you do nothing about your dreams, nothing will happen. Many people refuse to pursue their purpose because they think they don't have anyone to help them. That's a fallacy. If you are determined and committed to your life's goal, the universe will support you in surprising ways. When you want something, all the universe conspires in helping you to achieve it. Paulo Colho Hold tightly to your dreams and work hard on yourself till you get used to being a highly productive individual. You will need this attitude if you're going to fulfill destiny. You don't have to see the end from the beginning. Start from where you are. Clarity will come as you make progress. The next chapter will delve deeper into hard work and productivity. Chapter 3. Nothing ever comes without a cost. Many people want to be successful, but very few are ready to pay the price. Even fewer realize that nothing good ever comes easy. Success is built, and that's a problem for many people. Folks just want to step into huge success overnight without working or paying for it. The faster you realize the price for your destiny, the better. The shepherd boy learned this lesson from King Melchizedek, and that single lesson on hard work kept him going when things got tough. Hard work is not a problem. It's not a curse at all. In fact, it's a blessing. The good things of life are reserved for those that are willing to put in the work. The process of achieving your destiny will cost you hard work and dedication. Still, more importantly, those traits develop the character and capacity you need to live out your destiny. Here is a practical example for you to understand the role of hard work and consistency in achieving success. A 25-year-old who just got out of college cannot be given the position of managing director in a company because they haven't developed the skills and capacity required to be effective in that position. But if they choose to climb the corporate ladder, they will need to work hard to develop the capacity necessary to sit in the position. Through hard work and consistency, they will grow the flair needed to be effective at the top. 
Perhaps you don't have the results you desire right now because you haven't developed enough capacity. Run a check on your life to see if this is true for your situation. If it is, start doing something about it. Did you know, according to a study by Dr. Gail Matthews of the Dominican University in California, you increase your chances of achieving your targets by 40% when you have written goals, a clear action plan, and conduct regular progress reports. Chapter 4. Seek Counsel When Confused The shepherd boy, Santiago, was confused about a dream he had, so he had to inquire from a dream interpreter. That meeting with the old dream interpreter opened a whole new chapter of destiny for him. Let's put all pride aside. No one is really self-made. If you have accomplished some things today, it is because you were helped by someone somewhere. In the same vein, you would need the support of others to achieve your dreams. You won't know it all. No one was born with a mind filled with knowledge and wisdom. You have to acquire these intentionally. That's why you must read books, attend seminars, network with others, ask questions, etc. Don't be afraid to seek counsel. You could be just a piece of advice away from your next level. The fact that you're reading the summary right now is proof that you're intentional about your life. Keep it up. You can take it a step further by having mentors you can always meet for counsel. It's not hard to find mentors. The main thing is to make yourself valuable, then reach out to people you admire. People will be more open to help you when they see that you take their advice seriously and you also have something to offer them. This could be as simple as using your skills to help support their endeavors. For example, if you're a good graphic designer, you could help your mentor handle their designs for free. The relationship then becomes give and take, not just taking and taking. Chapter 5 you will have some setbacks on your journey, but your reaction to them determines if you succeed or fail. We have been trained to believe that not being successful at something automatically makes us failures. This idea has been rooted in us since we were kids. In class, we competed with other kids for grades. The ones who came last were considered failures and dullards. This ideology often follows us to adulthood, and it has the power to limit our progress in life. There is only one thing that makes a dream impossible to achieve. The fear of failure. Paulo Colho. Get this clear. The path to success is not a bed of roses. You will surely encounter setbacks along the line. It's normal because you're trying to learn and adapt. Failure will happen one way or another. But that's not the real problem. The real problem is your attitude to it. How do you react when things don't go your way? Do you consider it as a good omen? A chance to learn by experience? Or do you think of yourself as a failure? one incapable of accomplishing anything good. In the end, it's your attitude that counts, not the event. Healthy self-esteem is a must-have in your pursuit of success. People who have healthy self-esteem know that they can accomplish anything they set their hearts to do. They don't let circumstances or the people around them determine their attitudes. They know precisely what they want out of life and don't stop until they get it. This is the kind of attitude you should imbibe. Chapter 6. Listen to your heart for clear directions. You can easily tag this final chapter, Trust Your Instincts, because we will be talking about instinct and the role it plays in your life. The heart is where all real instincts come from. It is a gift to guide you on the path of destiny. Have you wondered where your passions and genuine desires originate from? They stem from your heart. Your passions are your heart speaking to you, showing you the way to go. It has nothing to do with your religious inclinations. The heart is a functional part of your being, and one of its purposes is to direct you in all you do. As you journey to your place of destiny, there will come times in your life that you're confused and can't seem to find good counsel anywhere. In those situations, listen to what your heart is telling you. Your heart will never lie to you or mislead you if you know how to listen to it. Your heart is omniscient. You can trust it to guide you. At some points in the wilderness, the shepherd boy was stranded and confused. But he made progress because he learned to listen to his heart for instruction. Deep within your heart is the map of your destiny, only if you will listen to it. If it's not already a regular practice for you, then listening to your heart can seem difficult at first. One way to get familiar with it is by cultivating the habit of regular meditation. This practice awakens your spirit and soul, making you more attuned to your heart. You can start with breathing meditation. Create a daily routine where you just sit in a calm position and use your breath as the object of focus. The goal is to observe your breathing steps. It's a simple but powerful practice that will awaken and sharpen your mind. 
Listen to the whispers coming from your heart when in quiet meditation. Sometimes you will hear what seems like a small voice, and at other times it will be a feeling telling you what to do. Your heart can communicate to you through any means. You just have to be attentive enough to learn its communication modes. The simple things are also the most extraordinary things, and only the wise can see them. Paulo Colho. Conclusion Some call it destiny, and others call it purpose or calling. We use different names to describe it, but we're all pointing to the same thing. Every one of us was created to do something. You exist to solve a set of problems that only you can solve so well. Some of us are blessed to find our callings early, while others realize it late. But irrespective of the divide you fall into, there's something in your heart right now pointing you in the direction you should go. The prompts will come in the form of your passions, pains, desires, and dreams. Don't take these lightly. Decide that you're going to follow your passion and fulfill destiny no matter what it may cost you. This may mean quitting your job or starting life all over again. The bottom line is, don't get stuck doing something you know doesn't make you fulfilled. It can be hard to switch if you are already on the wrong career path because you'll have to consider your bills and all. However, once you've realized the path you want to follow, commit yourself to it. Work on your dreams and passions after the hours you spend on the job that currently pays the bills. Do this daily and create an exit plan you can start working towards. Don't neglect relationships on your journey to fulfilling destiny. Forge great friendships with people that will propel you to be more and do more. You may have to make tough decisions along the way. One of them is cutting off counterproductive ties. If there are people in your life right now that only sap your energy and never contribute positively, you should get rid of them. If it's hard, just try to stay as far from them as possible. Try this. Are you at a point in your life where you're confused about the next step to take? Calm down, find a quiet place to empty your mind of all its worries. Then get into deep meditation as you wait on your heart to give you clear instructions. Be sure to document the ideas coming to you and put them to work immediately.